Do you have a fear of public speaking? You know when it comes up that your heart starts pounding or even if you're at a networking event and you have to go around in a table and even introduce yourself and you know it's going to be Unix. Well, I've experienced that too and every single time I go to a networking event or if I have to speak in public, I still do experience that. If we have not met before, my name is Kit Pang and here at Boston Speaks, I really want to help you fall in love with the way you speak uh, in public or just in your head too sometimes because public speaking is one of the hardest things that's out there as adults when we you know whenever we finish a talk or even before we, we we give a talk we're thinking oh man I suck at this but especially at the end of a talk we're like oh I should have said that why wasn't I funny I missed that and then we can always blame ourselves or complain and say okay we can get better than that but usually would you say to a friend, man, you did not say that one thing, you suck, you forgot that one thing, man, you're so bad at public speaking. You suck, right? We say these things to ourselves all day long, but in, in, in this video, I just really want to help you understand a little bit about the fear of public speaking. And there are usually four main reasons why people are so um, afraid of public speaking. And the first reason is, it goes back to our brain, is this is the fight or flight. Right? If a lion were to come into this room right now, you will be thinking, man, I don't know what to do. Adrenaline starts pumping to your heart. That's the same exact thing when public speaking comes into the room. You're like, wow, I don't know what to do. Adrenaline pumps into your heart. You see, celebrities who deal with this fear, now I'm not suggesting you uh, for you to do this, but there are some people who take a pill. And what this pill does, it stops adrenaline it's that and, and pumping into the heart as fast. So that means if it stops, hmm, you still feel calm. There's a lion. Okay, there's public speaking. Okay, so but the best way for you to handle this, I'm not you know saying for you to take any medicine. I don't think you need it. Uh, you can manually slow your heart rate down. Think about this: if you are going into a, a burning building, a firefighter. Well, that firefighter better has his or her breath under control. If you are going into a public speaking situation, you, it could be the same thing. Wow, that room is burning. Oh, wow, that's a room where I'm going to speak. How can you get your breath under control? Because if you don't have your breath under control, that's when people start to panic. Okay, so when you have that fight or flight, take a breath. It's okay, there's a lion in the room. If I don't panic, the lion is not going to panic. Wow, there's public speaking in the room. If I don't panic, it's going to be fine. The second thing is, it's hard to be vulnerable. People are a little bit scared or they're hesitant because they have to be naked up here and they have to show people, wow, this is who I am, this is my creativity, these are my opinions. And there's a lot of things that can happen when you're, when you're vulnerable. You have to be naked. You have to give your truth. You have to give you know, people your thoughts. So how can you really be vulnerable? You can do that by sharing stories that you feel comfortable sharing and what the ones that you have practiced. You see, when you share your stories, it's one of the best state-of-the-heart technologies that you can use to engage, to inspire, and to move people to action. But first, when you share a story, you have to share your own heart. Right? If you want to speak to someone else's heart, you have to share your own first. And sharing a story can be, yes, we can go into a, a more of a storytelling video a little bit later, but sharing a story shares your personality, shares your experiences, and shares your wisdom all at the same time. So much better than information. You do need information though, but when you wrap information around a good story, that's when you can become more of yourself. The third reason is people are not certain what's going to happen, right? You can say for yourself, wow, if I walk down the street, I'm not certain if a car is going to come by and crash and hit me. Well, some people think, oh, when I go into a public speaking situation, I'm not certain how I'm going to, you know, how it's going to be. I have to be perfect because, wow, what if something goes wrong? Wow, what if I don't say that? What will people think of me? My job, I'm going to fail. I'm going to do so bad, right? 
It's like trying to be perfect walking down the street. I'm going to be so perfect and careful that no cars are going to hit me. I'm going to be so perfect and careful that I don't get a chance to be myself on stage. That's what you are saying sometimes. Of course, life is not certain. And connection trumps perfection. Connection trumps perfection. So do you know how to connect with your audience? The last reason is, I just want to recap, is that brain, right? The fight or flight response. Can you just manually slow your heart rate down? Second is how vulnerable can you feel? Can you practice your stories? Are you comfortable sharing your stories? And third is uncertainty. Sometimes you're uncertain. So if you want to deal with uncertainty, here's what you need to do. First, take a breath and be able to share your stories, but then go into the room knowing that you will say, it's okay. Saying to yourself, it's okay, makes everything a little bit more calm, because usually what happens when it's not okay, usually is in our heads. Nothing's going on outside, everything is not okay in our heads. So when we can just take a step back and say, it's okay, it's happening right now, embracing the moment, now, I'm not saying don't practice or don't know, you know, learn from your experiences. I'm just saying it's okay. It's happening to me right now. How can I just take it in and say it's okay instead of I'm going to freak out? It's okay, right? That's what my yoga teacher says. You know, we're in downward dog or we're doing the chair pose, where right? our legs are burning. It's okay. Be in the moment because here's the thing: what my yoga teacher said: if you're stuck in that in your head, you're dead. Same thing. Same thing when you're giving a presentation. It's actually not your public speaking skills. We're stuck in our heads too much. So the last thing, if you want to get over that fear of public speaking or you just want to be better, it's practice. Most people don't take the time to rehearse and to practice anymore because we're trying to go from one thing to another and then we practice 10 minutes before. Well, how the heck are you going to be a good public speaker? or a good basketball player, or a good football player, or a good computer whiz, or good anything, if you just practice 10 minutes before you go on and do your live thing. How can you take some time to refresh, relax, and then practice? Sometimes we were in a rush and we're trying to do things last minute. We got so many things jumbled in our heads, we don't know what to do anymore. Take time to step back. Practice your craft. A master has failed more times than the beginner has even tried because the master takes time to practice. If you like what I'm saying, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell to get notifications for more videos like this. What's one of the things that's resonating with you most? Is it being vulnerable? Is it that fight or flight that's, you know, adrenaline is pumping to your heart? Or maybe you're just too uncertain or is it you don't practice? I would love to hear which one resonates with you the most. Put it in the comments below. Uh, for me, it's um, I need to, I I actually need to take more time to practice. I got so comfortable. I don't practice anymore. So I need to practice a little bit more. I need to step up my game too. Uh, I would love to hear yours. What resonates with you the most?